Praise the Lord. Shalom. Uh, welcome everyone to class. Thank you, Jeffina, John Paul, and Zello Toli for uh, joining class this morning. Uh, also, welcome to Divya. We'll begin our class this morning. Can I ask uh, Divya, can you lead us in prayer, please? Sure, ma'am. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this opportunity that you have given us once again, Lord, to come together uh, to learn about, uh, uh, Father, your uh, how to instill, Lord, your um, grace, your truth, Lord, into young minds, into young children father lord we thank you father for um giving us uh, these insights these uh, um uh, pointers father lord that can be used in uh, children's ministry father we pray uh, for pastor selena lord you equip her uh father to uh to deliver lord um uh, these um uh, father pointers to, uh, to us lord uh in a way father that is uh, pleasing to you father that is most effective to uh even for us father lord um that we can apply them lord i pray for each and every student lord um who is um uh, present lord as well as those who are coming we pray father that you uh help each one of us to um, understand father lord to apply Father, what we are learning, Father, we pray, Father, that you um, um, watch over us, Lord, um, throughout the session. Um, guide us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. We, uh, uh, Father, pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Divya. Uh, so last week, we finished looking at uh, the developmental needs of um, children. Um, in various ages, and we looked uh, last week specifically at preteens and uh, teenagers. Um, uh, in today's class, we will look at how uh, you know we can teach children using their different learning styles, uh, using their various senses. Okay, so uh, what are um, the five senses that we have, all of us? What are the five senses? <coughs> What are the five senses? You can type it in the chat uh, or you can unmute your mics and Have speak. The ears. Okay, hearing. What else? Four more. Ma'am, eyes, ear. Sight or seeing. Okay, sight, seeing, smell touch okay so hearing seeing smell and touch yes uh, thank you um, so our five senses are basically primary means by which information enters the brain okay so for all of us through our five senses you know um, uh, how we interact engage with uh, our environment with people with the world you know, through that, uh, through our senses, information enters our brain. The most basic technique for uh, effective teaching is using, you know, these uh, teaching methods that incorporate uh, all the five senses. So when you're teaching, when you incorporate all the five senses in your teaching, you know, um, uh, there's effective learning that happens. Now, why are we saying we need to use all five senses? Why can't we just use one or two senses? Any thoughts? Why I'm saying uh, we need to incorporate all five senses? Why am I not saying incorporate one or two? Sorry. Yes, to have an... Uh, it is to have a uh, holistic education. Because people understand from through different senses or from through different levels. So when we do that, we are likely to have a complete education for an individual. Okay. Uh, to have a holistic uh, approach, uh, holistic learning experience, yes. What else? Why should we include all five senses in our teaching? take care of individual differences because some are visual, some are audio, some are tactic, among others. 
Yes, thank you so much, Lubega, because not all of us learn through just one sense. We, we have multiple senses that we can learn, like for uh, some of you, you're quick at learning uh, from by just hearing. Some of you have to have hearing and seeing. Uh, some of you uh, seeing and doing. Some of you seeing and smell or hearing and touch. So we have, uh, you know, multiple ways that uh, each one of us are so uniquely wired, created. Each of us are so different. So we have different ways in which, uh, the, you know, uh, information uh, gets better into our brains. It's not just through hearing for every one of us or just through seeing but through uh, multiple ways, okay? So it's important that we incorporate all five senses. Uh, so use as many of the five senses as you can, you know, to get the most out of the lesson or the teaching activity, okay? So use as many as you can. Think of different ways. If you can use all five, it's great. But um, sometimes when we are uh, teaching, uh, you know, children, or teens, we can't use all the five senses, doesn't matter, but uh, use most of uh, them. Uh, Jafina, it's gone. Okay, so when uh, learning activities appeal to two or more senses, you know, more learning happens. So if, uh, what do I mean by this? When learning activities appeal to two or more senses, more learning happens. What do I mean by this? It means you can have more kids on board and more retainers on board in an individual. Okay. Thank you, Lubega. What do I mean when I say that learning activities that appeal to two or more senses, when you use two or more senses uh, for your learning uh, techniques, um, uh, then more learning happens? What do I mean by that? They tend to retain it more. Okay, they tend to retain it more. They uh, tend to grasp it more. Uh, why am I saying we need uh, uh, use more, two or more senses? Then learning happens. So usually, when we see in children's church, you know, uh, I, I I know it's not might not be the same uh, in the American countries or European countries, but here in India, we just basically are speaking. You know, uh, now we are trying to use uh, PowerPoints, uh, you know, like this, what we are presenting in class. So we present what we are teaching, the learning content uh, through PowerPoint, stories through PowerPoint, show videos. Uh, we also use flannel board with flannel pictures, or we can use just big placards with pictures. Um, but usually, if you see in most Sunday schools and children's church here in India, it's just talking. You know, children are only hearing, they're not seeing. But what if children are hearing, seeing, uh, doing, when you do an object lesson, when you do an activity, when you do a game, when you have an attention getter, you know, or when you're giving them objects they can touch or smell, you know, then more learning happens. So what I'm saying is don't just, uh, you know, use... Um, uh, when you're teaching to children, you know, just don't use, uh, just don't speak to them, uh, or use the hearing uh, sense, but also use two or more senses that would uh, help making the learning more, um, you know, efficient and enjoyable, and also which will help help them uh, retain information in their uh, brains. Okay. Uh, also, when you use multiple senses, you reduce boredom. And when you reduce boredom, you know what happens uh, with children, right? You reduce behavioral problems, okay? So using, uh, if, you, if you see children are bored, it's basically because you're talking to them. And nowadays, you know, children uh, are, have so, uh, so much of access to media. Even if you look at a one-year-old child, a, a one-year-old child is, uh, 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 you know, a one or two year old child is able to access the uh, mobile, you know, because the parent puts on the uh, some uh, uh, cartoon or something on the mobile and is feeding them or is keeping them engaged. 
so they know how to use it they touch it you know they press it and they 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 they're they learning from a very young age by seeing things whether it's on screen the tv is sometimes you know in most homes it's running and parents to keep their young ones engaged they put on the tv they uh, they either put on uh, some bible stories videos and bible stories or uh, songs you know gospel songs or it's just you know uh, something is happening on the tv and so children at a very young age are connected with media you know so when they grow up and when they come to gray when they enter into children's church and you're just talking to them that's when you can't they, they are just they can't just sit still because even in schools nowadays they have multimedia they have powerpoint presentations um, they're using all of these tools and so we we need to step up as a children's church ministers we need to step up our uh, children's church ministry in our churches and use all of this because you know children uh, every time they're bombarded by information through uh, media and we know in media every second there's a change in color there's change in visuals there's change in um, the slides uh, you know uh, whether it's movies or whether it's uh, cartoons there's a new character coming in every uh, other second so we also need to make our classes engaging others children will not want to come to uh, uh, children's church okay and they will not uh, uh, they will not retain the information that you are uh, teaching them and so when you know you reduce both them you both them you also reduce behavioral problems that's when they're not talking to each other that's when they're not running around they're fidgeting you know they're irritating you and thinking why can't these children listen to me okay so it's important that uh, you uh, engage uh, uh, and use activities that uh, engage their multiple senses okay uh, smelling and tasting you know these senses smell and taste is something that we hardly ever use you know uh, but it's something that can be most effective because some children learn to smell and uh, taste and when you use them you know which is least used but when you use them they can be most effective ways of uh, learning uh, learning activities that allow children uh, to say or do something uh, results in the greatest ability to recall and also demonstrate what they have learned so when you use all of these uh, uh, you know senses yeah, you know learning activities help uh, help children uh, allow them to do some uh, you know to learn to gather information and also it results in uh, you know uh, recalling what you have taught them later on recalling later on in life as well and also it will help them to put into practice or demonstrate what they have learned okay uh, did jesus use the five senses when he was preaching and teaching and talking to people what do you all think did jesus use sure sure yes thank you lobega so what are some of the uh, ways jesus used uh, the five senses Okay, parables. Okay. What else? When we see through most of some of his miracles, he was using, he wasn't only talking. There is, for instance, there is when he. He was treating a uh, sick person and he told him to touch on his eyes and they, there he was using almost all the senses yes thank you lubega uh, jesus himself we see you know when he taught people he used multi-sensory uh, techniques uh, you know for example he said uh, you know look at the birds of the air you know, the, the, there might just be birds flying or they're birds sitting on, chirping on the trees. So he says, look at the birds of the air, you know. Um, and uh, he he said, you know, they neither sow nor reap, uh, you know, or they, ha they don't have any storeroom, but yet their father, Heavenly Father provides for them. Uh, and, you know, Heavenly Father feeds them. 
uh, then he says, look at the lilies of the field. Now, why is Jesus showing them uh, the birds, the lilies of the field? Why is he showing them the mountains? Because Jesus knows that, you know, these people uh, are, are not as privileged as we are today where we have the Bible in our hands. Uh, they need to recall everything that they have taught them. So, you know, even when Jesus is gone, they can look at the lilies, the field, the grass, the mountain, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the boat. They, they can look at the birds and they can recall everything that he has um, taught them. Even when he was ministering to people, you know, when he sat down at the well uh, 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 and the Samaritan woman came to him, he told her, you know, that he would give her living water to satisfy her deep thirst. So here we see that uh, Jesus is using, she's come to uh, fetch water and Jesus is using water to you know initiate a conversation uh, for of eternal life that uh, that eternal perspective and so he's using the same water that you know he asks her for a drink that she's come to fetch um, and then how he ministers to her like uh, Lubega said you know Jesus touched the eyes of the blind man okay so touch uh, he also put mud you know, um, and we see that the blind man receives uh, sight. We see that Jesus, wa we see uh, Jesus washed his, uh, this, we read the, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And uh, through that object lesson of, you know, uh, or that activity, so-called activity of washing his disciples' feet, you know, he teaches them a lesson about servanthood, okay, or uh, servant leadership, or, you know, serving others. So we see that Jesus himself, you know, used multi-sensory techniques uh, to teach people. And it was it might have been very effective because even after he's gone, you know, they would have looked at the fig tree and they would have looked at the fish or they would have looked at, uh, and remember they had to pay their taxes, you know, whatever, so, uh, uh, or the coin. Uh, and uh, it reiterated or recalled, brought to recall everything that Jesus uh, had taught them. Now, researchers uh, uh, indicate that each sense stores uh, the information it receives uh, uh, in different parts of the brain or different places in the brain. So when we use a teaching uh, uh, a technique or a teaching strategy that involves one or more senses, we actually, what we are doing is we are increasing the number of connections that are being made in the brain. And, uh, you know, the likelihood is that children would be able to recall the information later on. And uh, you will be amazed how they can recall everything that you have taught them is because when you use all of these um, learning styles or these multiple sense organs, uh, you know, uh, which has created a number of connections uh, in their brain. And that is why they're able to recall information uh, later. So what really causes uh, this? Uh, the first one is because of increased connections. Uh, when, you know, when multiple senses, you use multiple senses, um, uh, or uh, techniques to teach children, you know, or when multiple senses are involved in your teaching methodology, you know, more neuro, uh, neural pathways are activated in the brain. And when more neural pathways are activated in the brain, you know, this creates a stronger connection and, uh, you know, enhances the overall network of information that a child or a teenager is receiving related to a particular concept or a particular topic um, uh, or a particular experience that you're talking about or a uh, narrative. So there is more neuro, uh, neurons uh, connected to each other. There's more neural pathways that are activated in the brain. And this creates strong connections. And, you know, the overall network of information just becomes very strong. And, uh, you know, memory is uh, a good memory is created in the brain. Also, uh, you know, when you use more than one uh, 
uh, uh, multiple senses in your teaching strategy. Uh, it enhances the memory and, you know, helps better recall. So by engaging in multiple senses, you know, we're actually providing uh, the brain with multiple avenues to encode and to store information. So in multiple places in the brain, you know, uh, information is encoded and uh, you know information is also stored so this uh, you know increases the likelihood of uh, forming you know strong uh, memory traces and it makes easier to recall uh, information later the third thing is uh, improved attention and engagement so when you use multiple senses uh, it can basically help capture and maintain the learner's attention. Okay, uh, so they because you're using different things, you're giving them things to touch, smell, uh, see. You're enacting things. You're uh, you know the way you are uh, narrating the whole narrative using voice modulations, uh, uh, hand gestures, facial gestures. You know movements. You're uh, getting children involved in the lesson. You have music in the background, and all of those things. It's just going to you know get them more excited, and it's going to increase their engagement in uh, listening and doing and being part of the class, and will reduce boredom and distraction okay now even when you use these multiple senses in a teaching method you're basically uh, catering to different learning styles in children different all of us have different learning styles okay so all of this can apply to us as well we have different learning styles and all of these learning styles can be accommodated in our uh, teaching okay um, so when uh, that is why I'm saying you need to use one or more senses or use all the five senses because some children learn, you know, better through, uh, you know, uh, different, uh, they have different styles of learning, they receive differently. So we can, when we accommodate all of these different learning styles, we're basically allowing the learners to access and process the information in ways that is pleasing to them, which is their style, which is their gift, uh, and which aligns with their strength. Okay, so that is why I'm saying, you know, accommodate all of these senses, because when we do that, we are basically accommodating different learning styles, and we are allowing learners to access and uh, process the information in ways that um, aligns with their strength. And uh, the last thing, uh, you know, when we use all these multiple senses, how it creates uh, a strong uh, memory in their brains is because of a deeper understanding. Now, the sensory input, you know, actually provides additional content uh, and richness to the learning experience. So what content you're teaching them, you know, it just actually enhances the whole thing. It gives it more richness, quality. And it can help learners um, make connections uh, with different aspects of the content that you're teaching them. Okay, And also, this can lead to a deeper understanding of the subject matter, especially when we're teaching spiritual truths. You know, we're teaching them concepts uh, which can be a little abstract, which they can't touch, feel, sense. But when you're trying to use it, uh, use uh, the senses to uh, explain to them these uh, concepts. We will look at uh, some of them, how we can explain to them. You know, that becomes more tangible, that becomes more real for them, and, you know, uh, gets them to have a, a deeper understanding of the whole truth or the whole concept or the doctrine, even that you are uh, teaching them. Okay. So we look at each of uh, uh, the five senses. Okay, the first one we look at is learning by hearing. So uh, he learning by hearing is basically they are auditory learners. Okay, they learn by listening. Uh, so how can you uh, engage um, people, uh, you know, people or uh, children with um, this style of learning? Any thoughts? Okay, Jeffina says singing songs that they can remember. 
how can you engage auditory learners? Sure. We can, as we are speaking to them, they are engaged, asking them questions, they are engaged, some recordings, like you bring in a recording to listen to them and then tell them to explain what they have had or ask them questions about the recording. All those ones can be ways of helping them. Yes, thank you, Lubega. Anyone else? How can you engage auditory learners? Okay, let's begin by when you're narrating a story. Okay, how can you engage them? Okay, being, uh, Jeffina says being expressive. How do you express? Okay, voice modulation. Uh, yeah, intonations, asking questions, okay. So, making, suppose uh, the story has uh, like animal, so animal sounds and such things. Yes, thank you, Divya. Making animal sounds, you can get the children to make animal sounds, they'll enjoy it. You know, um, so for example, Jesus is going, the boat, the wind was blowing, so you can just tell all the children to blow, ooh, ooh, you know, or, you know, the uh, thunder, you can get them to clap their hands and make noise or, you know, bang something, uh, like for a noise of thunder. Um, you, When you're also narrating, you can uh, use voice modulation, you can use, um, uh, uh, you know, your eyes, you know, uh, 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 eye contact, you can also use facial expressions, you can use your uh, hands, you can use your whole body, you can uh, you can be suddenly get soft, suddenly you can, you know, when uh, when a place comes when, you know, the person is very sad, you can even cry, you can use all of these. So, you know, all of this kind of um, helps um, uh, children, you know, uh, especially if they're auditory learners, to be engaged in your uh, learning. And uh, it can be a little uh, funny. You can look funny in front of them, but, you know, uh, it will be uh, really exciting. It will be really engaging um, for them. So, for example, you know, uh, if you're narrating, this is only for a, a smaller age group. We can't do this for uh, bigger children because they feel that, you know, if you're using it for preteens and teens, you, they'll think that you're being very silly. You'll have to engage with them in different ways. Um, maybe, you know, um, your voice modulation of how you're talking to them when you want to really be, uh, uh, you know, when you're saying something more serious, you know, uh, 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 like raise your voice or when you're saying something more loving, be softer, gentler, you know, so that uh, voice modulation you can do but for example if you're teaching uh, children uh, uh, grade one to grade four and you're narrating David and Goliath's story you know uh, you can you can say you know Goliath came and he was standing there and he was telling them he was challenging them who can fight with uh, me okay and you know all of these soldiers they were so scared you know nobody wanted to fight now you can say narrate a story like this but also you can narrate and said you know a uh, Goliath came and he stood in front of them. He said, who will fight with me? You know, so you can bang your feet and, you know, you can make the voice and you can get children to bang the table and you can, uh, you know, you can tell children. So how did Goliath speak? And they would, you know, uh, children who love uh, uh, are linguist learners. We look at the eight different styles of learning. Linguist learners, they would love to speak and, you know, uh, uh, say this and they'll be so excited. And, you know, uh, Goliath came and said, who will fight with me? And all of the soldiers, oh, they were so scared. And, you know, they all were running in one corner. So see immediately how you... Uh, you change and uh, you know and there uh, you know suddenly there comes a young boy and he's wondering where is this noise coming from and why are all of these soldiers looking so scared and panic and running and why are they all huddling together and why are they all talking why is not anyone fighting I thought there's going to be a battle you know and then you can ask uh, who is this young boy who came 
uh, to the battlefield. So you see the, the voice modulation, you see how you're moving, your gestures. Of course, I'm not moving here because I'm sitting on the chair, but you know, you can use all of that. And then you can just say, and you know, he's just looking, you know, so your facial expression, he's looking at all of the soldiers, and then he's hearing this voice, who can fight with me? And he's wondering, where this deep voice and who is this person screaming like this and he's trying to look here and there you know so this is how you engage uh, uh, auditory learners but this is not what you can do for uh, <laughs> pre-teens and uh, teens because they'll find it really uh, you know uh, they'll find you really silly and they will think that you know you're you're treating them like uh, kindergarten children and they don't want to be treated they want to be treated like adults so how do you think you can engage uh, pre-teens and teens? Auditory learners. How can you engage pre-teens and teens? Giving them reading turns. OK. A reading, yes. Uh, you can also have like, uh, you know, uh, for all age groups, you can show videos, you can have uh, film uh, movies, you can have uh, dramatic uh, readings, you know, you can get them to read in a very dramatic way, you can use puppets, uh, you can also have quiz games, you know, where they'll be very excited. Uh, you can have music in the background, uh, uh, you know, musical instruments to enhance the whole story. So maybe for uh, the war scene, you can have a, like, you know, battle cry, you, you know, the trumpet blowing and all of those things. You can use those. And you can also for uh, preteens and teens, you can engage them by, um, by asking them you know um and uh, uh you know t asking them you know what do you think uh, uh, david would have done what do you think when he heard this deep voice this huge person standing there you know um with a deep voice you know and you can speak with a deep voice because of course men have a deep voice and some of them and if there's a if a, there's a student in your class who has a deep voice you can get them to speak and say who will fight with me and all of those things so uh, you can engage auditory uh, learners in this way and uh, give them tasks that, you know, will engage them like uh, dramatic readings they would like. If they're good at singing, you can use them. If they're good at playing musical instruments, you can also use get them to do that in the class. Of course, even uh, singing, uh, you know, songs, um, uh, scripture in songs, you know, uh, these uh, Bible narratives in songs, you can get them to sing and they'll most, be most happy to do that. Any questions on how to help auditory learners? The other way to help auditory learners is to, you know, paint the whole picture for them because they love by hearing. So when you get you and you paint the whole picture, the scene, the scenarios, you know, especially for preteens and teens, you know, there was this two mountains. So here were the Philistines, here were the Israelites, and there was a valley there, and there was Goliath standing, uh, you know, so paint the whole picture, paint how the Israelites were so scared, uh, uh, you know, so that is something that you can do. Uh, uh, also, I, I, I remember, you know, when we were in, uh, I was in grade eight uh, during the whole uh, vacation Bible school time. Um, there was this uh, one of these, uh, this person who was supposed to narrate a very, very familiar uh, story, a narrative from the Bible. And uh, he, I think he knew the back of his mind, these were eight, nine, tenth graders. And if he's going to just narrate that narrative, all of us will shut off, you know, we'll all close our, uh, uh, our minds will be shut off because we've already had two sessions. This is the final session for the day. And so he, uh, you know, he just, the way he narrated the story, I still remember this. I think it's almost 30 plus years since I've heard the story, you know, uh, but the way he painted it was so beautiful. He, he spoke of a young boy called Tony and, you know, he told us how uh, Tony uh, would love to spend his summer vacations, it was summer vacation, so all of us in summer vacation, how uh, Tony loved to spend summer vacation uh, in his grandparents' uh, farm. And he would just wait when his exams would get over so that he would 
the very next day he would you know run off to his grandparents farm and uh, you know every time when he went to his grandparents farm he would admire the fields just beyond the uh, the the fence of the farm uh, the open fields the flowers and grandma told him there was a, a beautiful small um, you know a, a, a river a stream that was running and then he could see the majestic blue mountains way back uh, you know in the fields and he would always want to go there and uh, his grandma said and promised him that when he was you know when he would pass eighth grade uh, she would uh, take him there. So he knew that, the, you know, or most of us were in eighth grade. So he said, you know, Tony had just finished his eighth grade exams and he was super excited. He just wanted to run to his grandparents' home because grandma had promised that when he finishes eighth grade, he will, she will send him for a small hiking trip uh, near the mountains. And he's been waiting all these years. So he went to grandma's house and the first thing he reminds her is that he's finished his eighth grade and... Um, you know, he, he, she had promised that he can go uh, near the foothills of the mountains and, you know, uh, explore the whole fields uh, and that she would allow him. So he, she, she agreed and he said, I want to do that tomorrow itself, Grandma. So Grandma, you know, packed a small tiffin for Tony and the early morning he got up. He was very excited and his grandma gave him some, you know, he gave us a whole lot of instructions what Grandma said and he went and he was, so he painted a whole picture of the flowers and the green fields and, you know, um, the way Tony walked, um, uh, hey, uh, Jeffina, we lost you. We lost the presentation. So, you know, um, look at the green fields and the flowers and the birds and the butterflies and the cool, you know, he reached the stream, he put his legs in the cool water. And then finally, he realized he could, couldn't spend much time there. He had to go to the foothills of the mountain and come back. And when he reached the foothills of the mountain, he could see a lot of people going up the mountain. And he was wondering, you know, do any people, do anyone live here, are homes on this mountain? And he was, he, you know, he was quite surprised and he never, he, he couldn't recall if grandma had told him that the people were living on this mountain. And uh, uh, he thought, you know, if grandma, uh, if they were, then grandma would have informed him. He was wondering where all these people are coming from, where are they going on the mountain? And they're so excited, they're all talking up to each other. So he decided to go along with them and you know he walked along and in an event he saw everybody so many people sitting uh, there in groups and there was a man sitting on a rock and he was teaching them so Tony decided to sit down and listen to him you know and then he goes on with the story and everything and finally you know the tiffin box and the five loaves and two fishes and towards the end of that whole session is when we really realized Oh, he was narrating to us, you know, the whole narrative of the five loaves and the two fishes. But the way he painted it, I can still remember it almost 35 years since I heard that story. I cannot forget that story and the way he painted it uh, for us. So, you know, um, it's important when we when we narrate stories that we do such an uh, you know a, a dramatic not just dramatic way but the way we also you know paint the picture for them with help auditory learners okay uh, any questions any doubts so far anything that you like to ask okay uh, there are no questions. We'll move on to the next um, style of learning, learning by seeing, that is visual learners. Okay. No, not yeah, visual learners. Okay. Uh, so how do visual learners learn? What is this style of learning? Yes, Jeffina says by seeing. Okay. So these visual learners benefit by looking at something. Okay, it can be words, it can be pictures. Um, and uh, so hearing when it's combined by seeing, you know, um, these uh, learners can receive the information really well. Okay, so what can we use uh, for visual learners to make their learning more, uh, uh, you know, learning experience great for them? Sorry? Okay, PowerPoint presentations. 
movies using graphics images okay. yeah um yeah videos okay graphics uh, videos what else Okay, demonstrations, doing object lessons, having games, activities. Yes, what else? Puppets, what about puppets? You know, can you even use pictures? You can also use panel. I don't know if you know what panel uh, boards and panel pictures are. Uh, maybe I'll get it to in my next class. You know, uh, we have, uh, uh, for, for most stories in the Bible, they have... Uh, you know, these uh, uh, pictures which they have created out of cloth and then you have a board which is like a, a background where you could, you know, uh, use these pictures and narrate the uh, stories. Uh, you can also create your own, uh, you know, PowerPoint presentation with the stories. What I used to do is I used to watch um, these children um, uh, videos on various narratives in the Bible. I would just kind of um, stop it and then I would just hit on print screen and copy and paste it. Uh, uh, the picture on um, on a PowerPoint uh, on a slide, and then you have this whole, you know. Uh, you know, PowerPoint presentation uh, with the whole narrative. So you can use that for stories which we, we can't get online, but you can create your um, own, uh, you know, uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations for the narratives that you're using. If you don't have pictures that you can show them, if you don't have, um, you know, uh, videos, or if you don't have um, puppets or final graphs. Now you need to be very careful about the videos because most videos when I look at them uh, you know they are not from uh, good sources the kind of uh, there's a change in the story it's not presented in the right way that's presented in the Bible or they say things that are not uh, biblically right so you need to listen to the whole uh, or watch the whole video and listen to the uh, video uh, before you present it to children and also look at the source that you're taking from you know many of these Jehovah Witnesses they have a lot of content for children, children's material. So if you, if you click on anything, theirs is actually is the first, uh, you know, site that comes on because they have so much of uh, wealth of resources, but it's not the right site to get into and use their um, videos and their uh, content. Okay. Um, you can also, for visual learners, you can also use, um, you know, you can also enact skits. Uh, you can have different characters, uh, you know, you can use object lessons, you can use uh, presentations, activities. Uh, now, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, for the parable of the sower, you know, uh, what we did was we took a tray and in the tray we had already, you know, uh, put mud on it and then we made a pathway. Uh, and then we put in in some places on the tray. We in one place we put um, thorns. In another place we just placed uh, rocks. And in another place we just had you know some good uh, soil over there. So um, when children come to the class, we have this on the table. Uh, you can either put it on a sheet of paper, a thick sheet of paper, a cardboard sheet of paper, a cardboard paper. Um, or you can also have it in a big tray and then you have this and then you can talk about how, you know, the, the sower went to sow seeds and you can, you know, you know, you can just uh, uh, put the seeds on the pathway, you can put it on uh, among the rocks, the stones, the, the thorns. So children who uh, learn by seeing, they learn by touch, you can have the children who learn by touch come and, you know, put the seeds in different places, they can touch the thorns, touch the soil, you know, so they it will be very engaging for them. And also children who learn by smell, you know, you can see them taking, you can get get them to feel the rock and smell it or the mud and you know and all of those things so it will be very exciting for um, them so we you can uh, this is one example I'm giving of the parable of the sower uh, we also in our children's church uh, we did you know the stations of the cross during the uh, the just before Easter we did various stations of the cross so we had various stations in a big, large room. Uh, uh, we had one place where uh, we had, uh, it was a place for the Last Supper. So we had, uh, you know, just like mattresses or beds or some 
pillows and a small table and then we had plates and uh, uh, little cups um, and there was a teacher there and so when the you know we had children in various groups come to each station so they would go to that uh, 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 station and you know they would uh, 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 they would be uh, you know uh, 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 they would discuss about what happened during Lord's Supper. Uh, the teacher would explain everything. So they'll, you know, they will see everything. Then they'll move on to the next station where it's a patrorium where, you know, uh, the Jesus was beaten up. So there we had uh, whips uh, and we had a huge big uh, stick, you know, and uh, how Jesus was beaten, uh, how he was whipped uh, and how he took the punish. Uh, he took all of this upon himself for us. So there'll be a teacher there who will explain everything that Jesus went through at that station. And then, you know, the garden, uh, we also had the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, where you know we created a garden like scene uh, where we had just had pots and um, uh, you know the children would go there and sit down and uh, would explain what happened in the garden of Gethsemane and then uh, the last station would have is the uh, the cross so we had a cross there and we had um, uh, we had actually made a, a wooden board where we had nails you know um, sticking out um, so we still have that with us somebody made it for us on a wooden board we had nails sticking out so children would go and place their hands on those nails and would just feel the the, the pain and just say you know I mean uh, uh, they, they put these nails on Jesus' hands and his feet and uh, we also somebody made for us uh, with thorns they had made a, 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 a crown of thorns so they would even touch that would see that and uh, they, we would have the cross there and then we had chits of paper and then you know we'll ask them to uh, write all their sins and we had two buckets one bucket of um, uh, water which we had you know we had put red color in that and then you know ask them to put their sins in that and how Jesus's blood covers their sin and another bucket where we had just or a tub where we had a plain uh, clean water and we talked about how you know the teacher there would explain how Jesus is uh, you know Jesus what he did on the cross for us how he washed us he cleansed us and now we are clean and pure like this water so we had uh, this different stations of the cross uh, where we did it for the children and it was uh, something that they really enjoyed really deeply impacted them uh, they had it was such a powerful learning experience for them so it's learning by seeing hearing we explain everything they even touch uh, uh, you know the uh, the the nails the the crown of thorns they could touch the stick where you know uh, not the stick that was used for beating Jesus but you know the the immense pain he would have gone through so they just experience everything in life so that's something that we did you can even do that for your children in the schools that you teach or in your children's church because we're nearing Easter soon end of March um, uh, or you can even do children learn by seeing so you know um, basically when you're teaching them about the uh, you know, 10 plagues, which is very boring. That picture you can just show them about. Um, I found this on, on the website, um, you know, the puppets with the 10 plagues. Um, so it's basically very nice. You can get this printed out. You They give you a print option so you can get it printed out. And then you can just cut along the lines and uh, you can just, you know, uh, so it comes, the image will come like this in the front. And then you can just, you know, stick it around your, uh, you can or staple it so that it becomes like a ring. So when you're talking about each of the plagues, you have, you know, these 10 plagues there and you can show them and you can also have one for each child, whoever likes uh, by seeing or touching, you know, it can be very engaging. If not, if you're just talking about the 10 plagues, it can be just so boring for them because it's 10 and you have to describe each one of them for them. You know, you could just uh, do this. Uh, also, when you're talking about salvation, uh, how can we go to heaven? You know, we can't go to heaven in a boat so you can, you know, have a paper boat. You can't go to heaven on in a plane so you can make a plane or a, or a jet. Uh, but how can you go to heaven? So you keep changing that paper uh, with, you know, in a very creative way and finally it becomes a cross. How do you go to heaven? You, uh, you know, you get to heaven um, uh, through... Uh, 
uh, you know, believing in Jesus and what Jesus has done on the cross for us because he paid the price uh, for our sins on the uh, cross. Okay. Another last example that I would use, uh, just want to share. There's so many things that you can use, but I'm just giving you a few examples. Turning water to blood, you know, or Jesus, um, you know, turning um, the water into uh, wine. So what, turning water to blood, you can just uh, take, uh, you know, water in, in, in a cup like this. And then, you know, you can show them uh, the, the water that is there. It's clear and white, or you can use a glass. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, just um, say, you know, this was Aaron's rod, so you can use a stick. And at the end of the stick, you can just stick some red uh, food color. And you can just put in, in in that water, and the water immediately changes into uh, red. And so the children will be madly uh, excited how the water turned into uh, blood, uh, red, uh, which symbolizes blood. And then also you can, uh, you know, you can put... Uh, uh, instant grape juice mix, you know, and just tear it up and it becomes uh, grape juice. And you can say this is wine, but of course, Jesus did not use any powder like I am using. You know, he just uh, he just did it in a supernatural way. He turned the water into uh, wine. Okay. So those are some things, just a few examples that you can use uh, uh, for uh, learning by seeing, but you can use your own creativity and you can use so many different ways uh, to make it more engaging for children who are visual learners. We'll stop here. Uh, we'll go for our break and then we'll come back and take any questions and move on. Thank you.